everyone. And, uh, I'm so, 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 so really so happy to be with you. I wish sometimes we can be together. I've made many trips to Rabat while I was running this uh, uh, organization in IBM. I had many relationships built with many universities, Muhammad Fis and others. And I loved my time when I was there for about the Marrakesh. Uh, the uh, discussion today is about uh, our, our skills gap globally and what are we doing between industry and academia? What kind of uh, uh, relationship we should be really working on or looking at to uh, overcome this issue? So uh, I'm going to take you back to history. When uh, some of you maybe uh, uh, catch this, uh, when uh, the 60s, uh, when we were uh, uh, writing codes and putting uh, uh, building machines, uh, uh, coding, and we would send the people to the moon, but there was no school of computer science yet. And uh, it took like 20 years to catch the, uh, the movement to create a uh, computer science department. Computer science used to be, uh, during my time of my PhD in England, where we used to be in the department of math and science. And then uh, became all computer science. And then, so what happened is we always wait many, many years to catch a new wave. So the goal of this is to discuss that we really move fast. And how can we really bring the movement of AI as a educational and industry plus government collaboration to uh, not to be left behind? So the job market, I'm going to give you some statistics, and some of this is just a, a, a recent and some like one year old. <clears throat> so we, we, we have at least uh, a, a, the number of jobs open that we don't even have people to fill in. And I'm giving you a U.S. example. But for the first time, we start seeing that jobs are open, and especially in high technology, and we don't have enough people. If we look at a field like this, and all the people qualified researchers, as well as students, film this data in a big country, that needs possibly over a million, a million and a half. So when are we going to fill this gap? How will we fill this gap? Another data is uh, coming back. Once this starts, <coughs> some gaps in, uh, we call it the university, uh, uh, producing uh, skilled students or researchers are working, uh, companies, uh, and I'm not going to mention many names here, but uh, all of you know them, they start looking for uh, uh, outsourcing R&D uh, to different countries. So you can see that a company uh, in Silicon Valley, they start asking for A1 visa and it is and making what's called main drain other countries from their AI talents. The risk of that is, yes, you may fulfill your company's needs, but you're actually bring bringing other country, not company, but country, from the seeds of that AI researchers or AI talent that is supposed to be potentially grown inside the same country. So if over 11 and a half million people to be reskilled, because business is not going to wait, and business is not going to stop. So what business is doing is doing uh, these two factors I mentioned here. First is recruit from all around the world, catch the talent that you need, regardless of where it is coming from. Secondly, retrain, reskill the people. And that's exactly what happened in the 60s. We train the people, bring someone from the school, give them six months to their training program. That's what's taking place at the size of major companies in the U.S. So, uh, the next year is organizations and uh, other uh, areas of, uh, uh, of, of responsibility start saying, what can we do? What can we uh, uh, The good example I gave you here is about people go, okay, we have, uh, this is really real data, I agree with 
automation was doing. Let's let's put as many or as much AI and automation in the cybersecurity business in the company, and then we will uh, focus later. But there is other issue. The impact of AI is not only a knowledge impact. If you look at it, it's a cost campus, I call it, or cross university segment. You can see it now in engineering, for sure. That's what we slumped and we are working on at APEX. But we see it impacting medical, pharmaceutical, low schools, agriculture, business and finance, art, music, etc. So this is the extent of AI cross campus. What is the solution now? So the first thing the NSF, National Science Foundation in the US, did, said, okay, we're going to fund organizations, we're going to fund a centers for some uh, search work, but we need this to be a group of universities, not a single person. Because they pay a person at the University of Arizona, and they get a function, the University of Arizona goes and gets six universities to be members, they write the PIs and OPIs, and NSF to give them that. Uh, I was personally involved with Fujian Tech, uh, the University uh, Center for Education, where we, myself, uh, from IBM, other people, Microsoft, and other consultant companies, plus Fujian Tech, and Professor. Uh, we got uh, a center built there with some other uh, uh, institutions, and the focus was about how can we bring AI inside campus and education, and how can we bring uh, AI to be taught across the image of freshman year. This has been done by NSF, they spend money, but let me tell you, all these projects take years. Go to the previous slide, the short is then. So, if SF initiatives for years may be good, but it's not going to satisfy companies' needs. There is another thing uh, the previous speaker mentioned about this, which is the employees' mistake facing of the ethical of AI. And the ethical effect of AI has been studied by many organizations and uh, the AAR organization was calling for collaboration, was calling for ethical development, was calling for let's spread the knowledge globally. All these call them very good uh, ethically uh, uh, sponsored uh, approach is still would not be the next one calls the European and came and said, this is burden, is, I'm sure some of you read that if the yellow mask said, let's stop the results of the way on for six months, things are going in the wrong direction. Uh, actually, I have some opinion to some people. Uh, why do I stop for six months? The bad guy is still working. The good guy is not working. You are behind another six months. So there is no, there is no uh, uh, stoppage here, as we call it, uh, the train left the station, and uh, it is the good, the uh, 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 side of the, uh, of the AI development team that needs to be as and great and above the intent of the bad side, because there are going to be many impacts of AI in our lives. So what do we do as academia? And that's what we look really at when we say to the, in the discussion. What do we need in the community? I mentioned that it's across all majors. It's across all campuses. We need a lawyer to use AI to study the cases in their hands. We need a medical student that really know what the AI is practically professional and so on and so on in each major. 
Eu me esqueço das...
now in the world of life, you find that the first focus is computer engineering, computer science, maybe some computer um, electric engineering, but others exposed to AI is not enough. It has to be across the whole campus. So there are many uh, 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 countries also uh, uh, don't teach AI in a graduate level. They just teach it other factors. We need the graduate level programs within many countries globally. The next one is to acknowledge one. The company uh, works and needs to get uh, quality. For postdoc, where in the six months, three months or six months, I can tell you while I was, uh, I just left it a year, a year and a half back. But I used to get enough money, saying the numbers, I used to get enough for postdoc. And a few of those for AI, but many other companies never put money for AI postdoc. Those six months postdoc are essential for an industry first hand experience in industry R and D. So I encourage the authorities and the companies globally to not just double but to multiply by a factor of ten the AI PhD postdoc because the shortage is harming everybody. It's going to harm countries from understanding the impact of AI on their providing health care, providing education, providing services, even providing protection in the police, as well as other areas. So this is a point of a jointly uh, industry academia point. Uh, I put the last one as a good example. Uh, finally, uh, but, uh, it started about uh, now about two years, three years, at UAE, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed, the University of the Art. It is a university completely focused on the art. So, we need to read our place in a department for a school of But this country implies that AI is going to be great and deep, impacting everything from the life. So, then, Vested. This is a big investment, and Mohammed bin Zayed is your very eye. And uh, that concludes my uh, presentation. Thank you very much.